This drill I've had for about five years and it doesn't work anymore. There's actually nothing wrong with it other than the batteries which need to be replaced. But I don't use it anymore and I use this drill here. It works well. It's obviously charged since I use it more frequently. But this is not really about Makita versus DeWalt. Again, I've had no issues with this big boy heavy drill. Uh, but what I want to do is just take it apart and have a little fun. Um, see, what's, see what makes this thing tick. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I had, I've had this drill, as I mentioned, for about, gosh, I want to say six or seven years. This is the DeWalt's DC728. Uh, uh, I'm not uh, an expert in terms of, you know, exactly what a drill should have, but there are common sense uh, things that you want to look at. If you're not going to work in construction and you're going to use, uh, and you need a drill for a little bit here and there for home things, hanging up a picture frame, maybe putting something Ikea together, there's no need to spend $250 on a drill. A good $30, $40 drill may actually do it all. If you're planning on doing a bit more, you might want to grab a DeWalt or a Makita, something that um, has the application uh, that can handle that workload. So in this case, yes, I've used this. I've dropped this. I've painted on it. Um, this definitely has hundreds of hours of actual work drilling into concrete, I-beams, and steel. So um, again, nothing really wrong with it, but it's just old and hey, why not make a YouTube video out of it? So I've got the screws undone. And of course, they uh, didn't use standard Phillips. They're trying to keep prying people <laughs> off from uh, at least, uh, you know, initially trying to uh, undo it. So let's remove the battery. And is this, I'm going to say this just can't be NICAD. It's got to be lithium, right? Doo -doo -doo. It is NICAD, nickel cadmium. Okay, I guess I... No, I shouldn't have guessed that because I thought this was newer. So good old nickel cadmium probably explains why it's lasted so long as it did. Look, it even has a recycle number there. Love it. So um, NICAD battery. This one here, this DeWalt, has lithium. Um, we go into the big differences, uh, but we won't. This is just to look what's inside a drill. So we'll take the nice cover off. And again, when you spend a bit more high dollar, you expect the construction of these drills to be, you know, very good because this has been dropped many a times and um, it has survived. You can actually, I'm not sure, you can even see divots and holes where this thing is literally just went boom. And this thing isn't light, especially when you add the hefty mass of this, when this drops, yeah, it can absolutely uh, destroy anything other words, uh, un underneath of it. So this one's a little bit lighter, but it still has great construction. And you grab it and you turn it, especially from this handle, you, you don't feel much uh, movement at all. Great plastic, same thing when, when this is screwed. You know, when you're moving this up and down, you got a little bit of a twist. <clears throat> All right, memory full. So I had a, <laughs> a deleted video on this. So let's go ahead and take this guy apart now that we, let's see here, which side will come on first. Oh, excellent. So I've got the nice cover off. And um, I think usually inside there are PVC, mar or not PVC, but there are markings on the type of plastic this is. If you're interested, they're typically written on the inside. See if I can maybe show that. might be kind of difficult. Ah, well, all right, so as I mentioned, there are years of use on this, and you can absolutely see uh, <laughs> um, that the grease that's on here has collected a whole bunch of crud and crap on here. So we've got the standard motor, commutator. This uh, should be brushless right here. And if you can see when I turn this guy here, so it's torqued somewhere here uh, for the gears, and then this guy moves a little bit slower so it has more power. This is the uh, speed selector. Although it's not really about the speed, this is about the torque. Uh, you get more torque when it goes slower, so you get more power if you're drilling into, uh, you know, thick steel concrete, which this has done plenty of times, hardwoods like oak. Um, and then if you need something faster or less, then you can go to the faster speed. Um, you can see the uh, how the battery would plug in. Plugged in and it goes right into this guy here and it just transfers uh, just a positive and negative 
Um, a lot of the newer batteries might have several connections in order to monitor the battery for temperature. Um, drills have become very sophisticated in how they operate. It is, it is truly remarkable, honestly, the engineering that has gone into these. Uh, we see here a standard uh, resistive circuit, and we know that because there's only two. I've seen um, uh, these, uh, some of these guys actually have pots in them. Um, or, or circuitry to really pinpoint how fast someone's actually pressing on this. Um, whereas in the old days it was literally on or off. And you know that's how you can go a little bit slower and slower. There's some type of resistive mechanism. Um, I give a, I tell you what though, I do see something quite interesting. Um, let me pull this guy off. So here's the switch. Oh boy. And um, yeah, that's uh, pretty uh, pretty neat. I think uh, that's worth uh, getting a little closer. If take a look, take a look at this guy right here in the back. Look at this. You got a heat sink there to keep that uh, to keep the uh, maybe electronics cool inside. All right, so that's the handle. So the next thing we have is really really two main well three main things. We've got the actual motor. We've got the uh, selector here, which uh, changes torque. Luckily, we don't need this guy anymore. And lastly, we have the chuck. This is a, you know, a grip chuck, which works pretty well. Still feels absolutely solid. And, of course, we've got a huge mess on our hands. So let me see if we can separate this. Uh, da -da -da. Let's put some paper down here so I don't get my table too dirty. You can. Ugh, see that grease already coming on there, coming off. So now, how do we get this? Well, <laughs> all right. Woo! Nicely done. So that came right off, and uh, this is absolutely worth keeping. You know, it's uh, it's built very strong. It's it's a Haas. You know, a, a ton of torque. And you know this metal is very well built, so this will be uh, absolutely a great little uh, motor that I'm going to uh, keep for future projects. Um, nice thick wiring, good connections, and uh, just uh, if you're curious to see if I can view inside, you see they got little rotors there to cool off that back end of the fan as it's providing uh, that good power. And it still feels very solid. The uh, magnets in here rotating around the, uh, well, not the magnets rotating, but the stator rotating around just feels solid. So good thing to keep on hand. Um, and then this part here is where we receive a, you know, a ton of torque from. And one of the reasons why they tend not to slip and they last out longer is you can see how many gears um, are around. I don't think, I don't know the name, maybe planular motion, I don't know, I've seen different names, but uh, you can see here that they have a number of gears, and that's of course to keep that torque, because if you have one gear, you know, relying on just one tooth, it tends to create so much stress on the teeth that over time, when you're drilling in concrete, it just goes bonkers, it, it, it weakens, and pretty soon you have stress and fractures and they break. So what they've done is they've said, hey, instead of relying on one gear, what we're going to do is we're going to have it rely on five gears and spread that torque around. You know, that's force divided by the surface area of not one tooth, but now the surface area of this tooth, this, 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 and this. So very smart design in terms of making, um, you know, the, the drill last a long time. And uh, in terms of, you know, the ch chuck and, and when it should start skipping, you can see the little uh, <laughs> I don't little tab. That's where that's coming from. Selecting uh, when you want it to, uh, you know, not grip anymore. So we've got this, and um, yeah, that is pretty cool. Let me get back to my desk. So I mean, I don't plan on reusing this drill, but certainly, uh, you know, this chuck may be useful uh, someday to add. Uh, for uh, something else that I might need variable grip for, um, especially since you know it's it's hardened for steel, uh, so it can handle these drill bits. So uh, it's certainly not necessarily a waste. Uh, but yeah, let's see. Uh, yep. So let me see if I can grab this cover off. Oh, okay, easy enough. And we've got these lovely gears. 
Yeah. Now that's really, really good stuff there. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful, the way that it rotates? So I, it's, it's locked right now because it's, yeah, it's a bent that I thought it should have turned. But you can see how that should rotate. But they're just sitting right there, believe it or not, with a bunch of gooey grease goodness. And there they are, uh, very well precision made. And I bet that if I took these off, huh, I could make a nice, uh, nice necklace or something out of this. I don't know. But I bet that we've got even more. See if I can pull this up. We've got gears here to keep them rotating right. Beautiful. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Well hardened. And now if we take this off, there should be even more gears. Look at this. A gear that is holding on gears. Isn't that isn't that beautiful? And da da da, -da you guessed it. <laughs> Even, even more gears. Look at that. Let me see if I can uh, shine the light over. All right. I need this so I can grip the light. I'm getting it dirty. Now bring that over here. Look at that. Oh, maybe I should have had it there. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And there, then that, and the way that that's maintained the grease right there, all the way around. It is fantastic. So if we pull this plastic guy out, now I'm not sure why this is plastic, by the way. I have a, I have a hunch as why this is plastic and this one is not. <clears throat> and I think it has to do, do with uh, predictive failure. If, if something really bad happens, rather than binding up and permanently damaging the drill, it breaks this piece of plastic. So that way it does less damage overall. So let me just get these, okay, that'll drop nice in there. So I think that's what we have. And you can see yet again, five more lovely gears. Hmm. Maybe we could resell these uh, for used jewelry or something. So there's five more. And uh, let's grab this plastic guy out. And you'd call me a liar if you didn't see it, but there's another five gears inside that's supporting this chuck. Isn't that amazing? Wow, quite a lot of parts to get this guy truly up and running uh, and, and to handle the amount of stress that I think, uh, you know, that's been designed for, right? So let's see if I can more easily uh, take this off. I don't know. At this point, I think I may have to actually take off this chuck. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. Okay, I'm wondering if I can do this. It looks like I see a pin here. So maybe if I push this pin in, grab this pin. Mm, of course, my hands are slippery. All right, let me try if I can. Oh, I feel it. Oh, okay. Excellent. So it took out this pin. Just makes me think. Oh, well, well, well. Here we go. So that comes off. We've got another plate covering with a bunch of goo goo. Ooh, wow. Look at that grease everywhere. And it truly amazes me that it's still within this cavity after so many years and after so much use. Um, and again, <laughs> we see even more gears, and maybe this is the best way to really show, you know, when we talk about that surface area, now you've got that many gears that are going to be used to support the stress and the strain and evenly distribute that out between those gears. So let's grab this guy out. Oh, we've got... All right. This is like a watch where they use these for watch bands. It's interesting how they uh, come with uh, up with how some of these are supported. So if we take this beautiful ring off, and we're left with even more fun. So we've got ball bearings here, and that's where the click, 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 click comes in. I believe that's where that came from. 
Let me set this. Oh, hold on. <laughs> All right. So we've got even more stuff here. It's beautiful. So uh, probably used to getting sick of gears by now. Of course, it's nice and sticky. And we've got more ball bearings goodness in all this. It's a good thing I wasn't planning on keeping this um, because I'd have to put this together if I if I needed a fix or repair one of these. But luckily, I don't need to. So back into this guy right here. I'm gonna see what it's gonna take now to separate it. Now you can see that it's on a on a ball bearing um, system here and look how smooth on how smooth that is uh, without uh, the added uh, friction from the um, rotary gears. Look at this. This is why it has lasted so long. I've concrete, drill, I-beams, you name it, it's gone through. And look at that, you know, six, seven, eight years, however old this drill is, wow. So excellent, excellent build. You know, this isn't about uh, which brand is better, but clearly they're in the game for a reason. Um, I'm just fascinated by where this grease goes. I'm curious, you know, look at this. Every single one, cavities, is full almost to the same volume. You see a little bit less here, but that may have been from me. So it's interesting to see how the distribution goes. But, you know, I don't think I can go much further without having to, uh, you know, punch this out of this plastic. So we're set here. And, of course, we have um, this chuck, um, which I can't undo <laughs> without a, something to squeeze the back side. But, yeah, I mean, overall quite amazed at how long this this moves this is just fantastic so I hope you enjoyed this video if you do plan on taking your drill apart uh, perhaps make a video so you know how it goes back together because there are probably a lot more parts than most people assumed back in the day it was you know the the motor was directly connected to the stator early early on and that was it and there were huge problems with that, number one, and really the main problems being torque. Now with these additional gears and ratios, you can get a ton more torque, and the metal precision means they can handle even more stress and strain, and it just, just last as long as it has. So uh, nothing was wrong with it, but you know, luckily I've got this 14.4 volt uh, beautiful motor, nice heavy duty that I can keep out of this. Um, and I don't know, I might keep some of these parts. I'm really, you know, I like to keep gears. You never know when you need something. And it's very rare to find gears that are made out of, you know, stress, um, stress proven material. Because that's what this is really about. So, yeah, you know, it might be interesting. Who knows, I might find a good project uh, to use them for. And the nice thing is, since this motor is, uh, already has one bearing on it. So if I need to make a lift of some sort, I've got plenty of gears now that'll match and align to that perfectly. Uh, even more torque. <laughs> wow, this is incredible if I need it. So make sure you uh, wash your hands after something like this. And thanks for watching. Now, how do I shut this thing off without getting goo grease all over my camera? Mmm.